Spacing out your studying and repeating and going over topics is one of the best ways to remember information. But spaced repetition can seem quite confusing and it's difficult to find practical advice on how to space out what you're studying and what the best spacing intervals to use are. Well, in this video, I'm gonna break down how I use spaced repetition in a very practical way when studying for medical school and surgical exams and give you some options to practically implement spacing into your studying and exam preparation, regardless of what subject you're studying for. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Alex. I'm a surgeon and the founder of a few edtech companies. And on this channel, we focus on learning and human performance to help you live healthier, wealthier, happier, and more productive lives. Now, many people don't quite understand what spaced repetition actually is. And it's often overcomplicated on websites and YouTube videos, meaning that people feel overwhelmed and just don't use it. There also isn't a huge amount of practical advice for actually implementing spacing, which means people sometimes miss out on incorporating this powerful evidence-based learning technique which is actually really, really simple and super easy when you know how. So in today's video, I'm gonna cover some practical ways you can use to get started using the principles behind spaced repetition. And I'm gonna look at how I used it when studying for medical and surgical exams, which helped me come first in the year. I'm gonna break this video down into the principles behind spacing and why it's actually super easy, the problems people run into when trying to apply these techniques, and then I'll cover how I practically use spacing when studying for exams, which I'll break into plan, regular reviews and exam revision using a framework that I built. I'll then give you some quick tools you can use to automate some of your spacing in the revision section at the end as a bonus. So do hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and let's get into it, starting with a quick summary of the principles on spaced repetition. So spaced repetition is an evidence-based study technique that's heavily backed up by science. In a nutshell, spacing is just coming back to information and retesting yourself on what you've learned after a set interval of time. Its application goes all the way back to the 1880s when German psychologist Hermann Ebinghaus conducted a series of experiments into learning retention and discovered that our brains naturally forget things if we don't go back and review that information at set intervals. His experiments, which involved him memorizing things himself, produced what's known as the forgetting curve, which shows the gradual decline of information in our brains over time if we don't review and retest this information. The only problem is, I can't remember what I've forgotten. Our brains are pretty good at trying to filter out unnecessary info, and if we're not regularly using that information, our brains will just filter it out and forget it to be efficient. The forgetting curve is exponential because memory loss is rapid and enormous within the first few days of learning anything. In fact, we forget over 50% of the information we learned within an hour of learning it, and over 70% of it is gone within 24 hours. But from then on, the rate of memory loss decreases and the rate of forgetting is actually much slower, as you can see from the curve. We've all learned a topic and then a few days or weeks later, you just can't remember it, and it's really, really frustrating. To summarize Ebinghaus's findings, the rate at which we forget information is impacted by three key criteria. Firstly, the meaningfulness or relevance of the information, then the way the information is represented in our brains, and finally, physiological factors like stress and sleep. Now, the good news is that Ebinghaus found that the forgetting curve could be interrupted and our memories could be strengthened through two key methods. Firstly, better memory representation. So this could be things like using mnemonic techniques or memory palaces to help you position your memories. And secondly, repetition based on active recall, which is then spaced out. For instance, taking time to repeat information every day during exams decreases the effects of the forgetting curve. According to the research, information should be repeated within the first 24 hours of learning to reduce the rate of memory loss. Now that's all great, and I've got a deeper dive into the science behind space repetition for those who want it, but here comes the problem that everyone who tries out space repetition encounters. So we know that we need to space out our studying, but when you get started, it just seems way too overwhelming to apply spaced repetition for everything that you need to study for your exams. For something like medical finals, where you need to learn a huge amount of information, having to repeat every topic four or five times while also attending lectures and balancing your work and life feels really overwhelming and it just isn't very efficient when it comes to studying in your time. Even getting started is way too hard with minimal information out there on the best spacing intervals to use or how to plan out your study sessions. This difficulty getting started and the feeling of it being too much work puts lots of people off. And when I first started, the potential excessive workload just kind of didn't make sense and it demotivated me from actually using spaced repetition in my own practice. When I was studying for my postgraduate surgical exams around my day job as a surgeon, I was really looking for the most effective and efficient ways to study possible. And I didn't want to spend hours after work in the library 
working through a crazy study schedule with lots of information being repeated. Now, luckily, as with all learning, I focus on the principles of spacing, which we've just covered, rather than just trying to implement a strict spacing schedule, which is what 99% of people try and do after Googling best spacing intervals. So let's look at the way that I applied spacing that helped me to retain information for longer while also allowing it to feel manageable and keep me efficient while I was studying. So spaced repetition is actually really, really simple if you understand the basics. The goal of the framework that I put together followed Ebenhaus's principles for counteracting the forgetting curve. I wanted something that ensured the information I was repeating was relevant to me and what I was studying. I wanted to ensure whatever I was studying was well represented and organized. And I also wanted to make sure I had a good work-life balance and was well rested and not stressed. Also, I could be more effective and efficient with remembering whatever I was learning. To help me remember, I called this framework PR3, which stands for plan, plan your spacing and recall sessions during term time, and then in the run up to exams to ensure things are relevant. Regularly review the information that you're learning as you go along to ensure it's well represented and organized. And finally, revise the content you're learning in the run up to your final exams in a way that optimizes for time and naturally spaces out what you're learning. So let's look at each of those steps in detail, starting with planning. So to keep things relevant and to ensure that you have a good work-life balance and aren't sleep deprived or stressed, planning is probably the most important part of the framework. This is really about deciding on the simplest and easiest way to incorporate spacing into your regular studying schedule and also about mapping out the study schedule as you get closer to your actual exams. If you plan things out and are organized, it should then be just a matter of following the process in the next two steps. So for planning, the first things that I do is to look at what the most important principles and topics are for the things that I'm studying, and I'll optimize to apply spacing to these high yield, commonly tested areas of the syllabus, rather than just adding every single thing on every single lecture to a spacing schedule. In Ebinghaus's experiments, he found that the forgetting curve wasn't the same for everyone, and things like how well we already understand a topic also greatly impact how quickly we'll forget it. So in addition to planning to focus on the high yield topics for a subject, I would also look at which of those high yield topics I understood the least and would flag these up. In terms of how I practically identified the high yield topics and self-assess to identify my knowledge gaps, I would typically grab some past papers and the course syllabus at the start of a term or for my surgical exams whenever I signed up for an exam. I would then quickly go through these and note down what topics were commonly tested and which I had absolutely no idea about, and I'd usually block out time over a one or two day period to plan all this out. This helped optimize for relevance, and it was also helpful to make sure that you're using the best studying resources like textbooks, question banks, and mnemonics in the planning phase, which helps take care of how well your learning is represented in your brain. Even just spending time organizing your lecture notes so you know where to go to find information will help keep you efficient and make getting into studying as easy as possible. I also use Google Sheets or an Excel document with the exam syllabus and topics in one column, and I then color in red the topics I struggled with, and then I knew what to prioritize. I've put a link in the description below to an exam spacing schedule for any exam which you can adapt and I'll go through how to manage your time and plan a revision timetable around the topics that are high yield and which you are the weakest at in a more detailed video next time. So be sure to hit subscribe to get notified when that drops. By focusing on the most commonly tested topics and the proportion of these that you're weakest at, you're also following the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule, whereby 80% of your results will come from 20% of what you're focusing your studying on. In terms of then structuring this, I had a short-term weekly and daily spacing routine and a longer term exam revision timetable, which I planned out and which I could stick to around my schedule and life. I integrated this into my calendar so that spacing became part of my routine and helped me to form a habit. Rather than thinking of it as a complicated topic with set spacing intervals, I basically optimized for the fact that most forgetting occurs in the first 24 hours of learning something, and then planned longer spacing intervals to be part of the review stage as the exam got closer. So let's look at how I use spacing to attack that exponential part of the forgetting curve in the first few days after learning something. So the next part of the PR3 framework is to incorporate regular reviews into your daily and weekly study routine, where you go back over topics you've learned in the last 24 hours or seven days and do some quick active recall questions and blast through the topic to identify anything that isn't sticking on first and second reviews. Again, don't overcomplicate this by worrying about what the best spacing schedule is. Just appreciate from the research that most forgetting exponentially happens in the first 24 hours and seven days. So what does this look like in practical terms? Well, for me, as you may have seen from my other videos, I'll create active recall questions when learning new content and when taking notes. Now, whether you're actively testing yourself from your own questions, from question banks, from flashcards, or just closing your book and trying to recall answers in your brain, the simplest way to effectively apply spacing 
is to review what you've learnt at the end of a study session and at the end of each day or on the morning of the following day and then doing a longer review at the end of a week. I would incorporate these spaced reviews at the end of day zero, so the same day that I'd learned something, or on the morning of day one, the day after I'd learned something, to make this my first spacing review session. I would block out this time in my calendar and do it at a set time every day to help make it easy and to form a habit. I wouldn't spend ages on these reviews, and depending on what I was studying, I'd spend maybe an hour or so, depending on how well I knew a topic, and would again focus down on the things that I knew I was weakest at. In fact, there's evidence that just quickly reviewing what you've learned in a short study session helps to combat the forgetting curve, so I'd try and get into the habit of quickly blasting back over questions or topics, even if I'd just been studying them for an hour or so before. Remember the principles of spacing are that if you leave a little bit of time after learning something and then need to think harder to recall it, it strengthens your ability to recall the information, and so even these mini reviews after a short lunch break can help to build up your ability to remember what you're learning in the long term. Now, if you're really struggling for time, you can even try and recall what you learned the day before in the shower the morning after or on your walk or way into work. If your head's down studying, day zero, day one and end of week reviews mean you don't need to worry too much about specific spacing intervals and can just pick up topics you've learned over the last seven days. The final point here is around time management and using active recall. Ebinghaus recommended using active recall and memory aids like mnemonics and remember you don't need to remember everything perfectly on your first review. So just try and get through the self-testing review sessions rather than spending ages revising. For me, I already applied active recall during term time when making notes and learning new content. So it was just a matter of adding in these review time slots around my active recall practice, which massively improved my learning. If you are studying for longer periods of time and have a ton of information like in medical finals, it's also helpful to block out a single day at the beginning or end of each month to then whiz back through what you've learned in the last month retrospectively. And use this as your third spacing interval such that you end up with intervals at day zero or day one, day five or seven, and something around day 30 to increase the spacing intervals as recommended by Ebinghaus since our forgetting becomes less exponential after that first week. Don't worry about the exact days, focus down on making it fit around your life and calendar and make spacing reviews into a habit. Block regular reviews out in your calendar, do them at the same time, and get into the habit of doing mini reviews between study sessions as a super easy way to apply spacing right away. Now the last part of the PR3 framework is then when exam time is coming around and you're no longer trying to absorb new content and have been through everything at least once or twice. This is typically where I would be self-testing from question banks, past papers and my own created questions using active recall in the run up to exams. At the start of this period, I would jump back to planning and just do a quick self-assessment to see which topics I felt I knew the least and challenge myself to tackle these first. For surgical and medical exams, this time period was usually the final two to three months before an exam, but it depends very much on what the exam is and for smaller exams, I'd probably just spend a few focused weeks of efficient testing and revision. For the revision period, I would use my spaced exam schedule in Google Docs, which I'd create during the planning stage. When doing my self-assessment, I'd color the key topics and plan out when I was going to review the topics during this concentrated revision period, focusing down on the high yield topics which I knew the least. I would set myself a goal of doing as many questions as possible within study sessions, as for me, this was the most effective and efficient way to learn. Importantly, I'd also factor in time to chill out, go to the gym and take breaks, so that as I was testing, I wouldn't burn out and I had enough sleep to remember things effectively. In the revision period, you can also hack things further and be even more efficient by using online tools that have a built-in spacing algorithm in addition to your spacing study schedule. Tools like Anki flashcards will flag up questions at set intervals based on how well you know them, and using existing question sets for the exam you're revising for can help keep you focused on getting through the flashcards while Anki takes care of the spacing. Some question banks like Shikan also do this with active recall questions, which realistically resemble past papers and exam questions. In Shikan, the light bulbs represent your spacing and mastery of the question, and once you've hit five light bulbs, you know you've mastered that question and it's removed from your circulation. The advantage of both of these is that you can be laser focused on doing as many questions as possible and completing them all while the algorithm looks after your spacing. In the revision period, my weekly schedule would look similar to that in term time, where I'd go through topics doing active recall questions and then reviewing these at set intervals. Remember, there's no perfect spacing interval as it depends on how long you want to be able to recall information for. And I have more information on this in my deeper dive into spacing 
But the most important thing is to review and go back over everything you've prioritized in the revision stage while also looking after yourself. So to summarize, spacing doesn't need to be difficult. And if you understand the key principles outlined by Evening House, namely the information should be relevant, organized and studied using active recall and then reviewed at intervals while optimizing for sleep and reducing stress, you'll probably do very, very well at your exams. The framework I use aligns to this by planning and optimizing for the most relevant topics which you know the least well, and then structuring in regular reviews during your day, week and month where you retrospectively go back over topics at natural intervals and then go back over everything in a focused revision period which again focuses on topics you know the least. If you want to dive more into the science of space repetition or how to look after yourself when studying for long periods of time, I'll put up links to those videos in the end cards. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being a subscriber to the channel. Do hit subscribe if you haven't already done so and I'll catch you again in the next video.